Now, the main enemy is Freemasonry. Freemasonry claims it tries to make good men better men, and it accepts only men of high moral character, and it's an educational religious society. They seek to improve the community. But what they fail to tell the people is that Masonry has another purpose. It's completely unknown to much of the public and many of the Masons. Manly P. Hall, a 33rd degree Mason, said, quote, Freemasonry is a fraternity within a fraternity, an outer organization concealing an inner brotherhood of the elect. In the first degree, the initiate is asked the following question, what do you desire? In the first degree, he answers light. In the second degree, he answers more light. In the third degree, he answers further light. But he's led phase by phase through a series of blood oaths. Now, Albert Pike, who's probably the most famous Freemason of all time, he was a Mason who simultaneously occupied three different positions. He was the head of Washington, D.C. Masonry. He was the head of American Masonry. And he was the head of World Masonry. Albert Pike wrote the book Morals and Dogma. It was published in 1871. It's been called the most important book of Freemasonry. It's been called the Bible of Freemasonry. Uh, Albert Pike says in Morals and Dogma, quote, The Mason is familiar with the doctrine that the Supreme Being is a center of light. And what is this light that the Masons are talking about? Page 321 of Morals and Dogma by Albert Pike. Quote, Lucifer, the light bearer, Lucifer, the son of the morning, is it he who bears the light? Doubt it not, end quote. And on page 324, he repeats the thought. He says, quote, a devil, a fallen Lucifer, or light bearer. He identifies Lucifer as being the devil. Uh, the New Agers believe the same thing as the Masons. Manley P. Hall wrote the book, The Lost Keys of Freemasonry. He says this, quote, when the Mason learns the key is the proper application of the dynamo of living power, he has learned the mystery of his craft. The seething energies of Lucifer are in his hands." End quote. So the Masonic writers are telling the Pope they conceal the worship of Lucifer from the rest of the Masonic Lodge. In the 28th degree, the symbol, uh, this is for the, the degree Knight of the Serpent, it has a snake biting its tail. And what looks to be a friendly person, but you look in the reflection here, as you can see, if you turn around, it's a demon. And that's important because Albert Pike says, quote, that which is above is as that which is below, end quote. Uh, the House of the Temple in Washington, D.C., which is where Freemasons get uh, receive their 33rd degree. You have to be chosen to be a 33rd degree Mason. In the book called The History of Freemasonry, quote, this star represents good when represented with one point upward. And the page reads on, it's quote, but when turned with one point down, it represents evil. Send quote. The pentagram is one of the biggest symbols in, in Satanism. Well, in the French case, they organized a huge exhibition in Paris on um, the evils of Freemasonry as a conspiracy. And likewise, in Britain, they would have barged into big Masonic lodges and confiscated all the paraphernalia. They might well have made a big exhibition of all this stuff in the Guildhall, 
with all sorts of photographs and information and line charts showing this great Masonic network allegedly running Britain and pointing out how many cabinet ministers or whatever were Masons. And um, they would have tried to sell that to the population, saying, look here, you idiots, you've been um, governed for years by 200 sort of leading Freemasons or something. The Sunder van Dungus list, GB, or Black Book, named 2,820 individual enemies of the Reich, who were to be hunted down and eliminated once Britain had been occupied. All the members of the British government and the civil service were on the list, but the remainder were the cream of Britain's intellectual and literary elite. With these detailed lists, British Freemasonry would have been eradicated, just as it was in the Channel Islands. It was on the morning of the 27th of January, 1941, that squads of special troops, professional wreckers, arrived here at the Masonic Temple in St. Helier and set about the systematic looting and pillaging of this beautiful building. They stripped out all the main furnishings and they also stripped out and ransacked the splendid library and museum and as photographs which are taken at the liberation show the damage inflicted was horrendous it was state vandalism the masons also use a masonic timetable system they don't use ad they use al AL is their, their standard of uh, the calendar system. Uh, it means Anno Lucis, and that means in the year of light. It could also be interpreted to mean in the year of Lucifer. And you can also find AL at the, on the cornerstone, at, at the engraved date of any cornerstone laid by the Masons. The Masons definitely believe in symbology and numerology, and they have a fascination with the number 33. The Masonic Encyclopedia says that Charleston, South Carolina was selected as the first home of the Council of the 33rd Degree Masonic Lodge. The major events that have happened on the 33rd Degree Latitude, it's where the first nuclear bomb was tested at Trinity Site, New Mexico. And the monument chosen to commemorate this site was an obelisk, which is a Masonic symbol. The 33rd Degree Latitude also passes over both Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan. These sites were the place where the first two bombs, atomic bombs, were dropped at the end of World War II. Truman was a 32nd degree Mason when he dropped the bombs. In October of 1945, he became a 33rd degree Mason. But the most astonishing incident that has occurred on the 33rd degree latitude of the map is a passage over the city of Dallas, Texas, where on November the 22nd, 1963, JFK was assassinated. The president passed an obelisk that is located right in front of the school book depository on the street where the president was shot. But what we know as Freemasonry came most recently from the Order of the Knights Templar movement in the 1300s. Actually came before that, in the year 43 AD, from a group called the Mysterious Force. That's actually where Freemasonry came from. And this following information is from a book called The Origin of Masonry. The mysterious force was established in 43 AD, and it started when a counselor to King Herod Agrippa came to him and complained that the followers of Jesus had a mysterious force. So the purpose of this group was to attack the teachings of Jesus, and that they should establish their own mysterious force in order to preserve Judaism. King Herod Agrippa said, quote, we will use the hammer because it was used to nail Jesus' hands and feet. Every session will be opened by striking the hammer three times, end quote. And you notice that judges have the hammer to bring order to the court. King Harry Griffith said, quote, we'll make degrees. These will be 33, symbolizing the age of the imposter. And on November the 43 AD, the first official session was held in the first temple of Jerusalem, which was a basement in the palace of King Harry de Griffith. The meeting of the mysterious force was always held in the temple, that was the name of the temple. And in 1717, modern Freemasonry changed it to the name of the Lodge. To prove that Masonry is of Jewish origin, we'll hear the following quotes. The rabbi Isaac Weiss wrote in 1855, quote, Masonry is a Jewish institution. 
whose history, degrees, assignments, signs, and explanations are of Jewish nature from beginning to end, end quote. Theodor Herzl, the founder of Zionism in 1897 in Switzerland, said, quote, Masonic lodges are established all over the world to offer us help to achieve our independence. Those pigs and non-Jewish Masons will never understand the final objects of Masonry, end quote. President Barack Obama concludes his three-day trip to Israel today, and it began early with a trip to Mount Herzl, where he laid a wreath on the tomb of Theodor Herzl, the Zionist visionary who imagined the state of Israel, but who died 40 years before it came into being. Those pigs and non-Jewish Masons will never understand the final objects of Masonry, end quote. Uh, also in the Jewish Encyclopedia, there's no criticism of socialism or communism, and there, in fact, they say that they're instrumental in founding and making socialism flourish. In fact, Jewish international bankers finance the Russian Revolution. Now, going back to what all this Freemasonry is, is rooted in, it's rooted in the Jewish Kabbalah. The Kabbalah is the Hebrew word for received tradition. The Jewish Kabbalah is a medieval Jewish book of occult philosophy and magic based on mystical interpretations of the Old Testament. The Kabbalah is important with magicians, sorcerers, witches, Satanists, as well as Masonic philosophers. And all the things that I just mentioned that are rooted, we talked about Freemasonry, it gets back and is rooted in the Jewish Kabbalah. The book Morals and Dogma has 65 pages dealing with the Kabbalah. Page 741 of Morals and Dogmas says this, quote, Mason raises search for light. That search leads directly back to the Kabbalah. that's out to help people. Lucifer is? Yeah. Luc say that again. Lucifer is a pure, holy... Virtuous. Virtuous. Now, see the Lucifer that God created? That's the same one. Oh, man, this is great. Oh, Amen. God bless you, Amen. brother. Because that's exactly what the Shriners and Masons teach. This is what a Mason confesses, is that Lucifer is light. 